Hi, my name is Liam Brady and I'm going to be the next Vice President of Education in the SRC. Okay, um, you're running unopposed this year, uh, so technically you wouldn't have to prove that you're better than anyone else. So I'm just going to give you <laughs> the opportunity to tell us why you're still the best one for this. Of course. Um, oh, I do think that's a massive downside of being uncontested, that I don't get the chance to actually go up against someone and properly prove myself. So yeah, I do think I am the best person for this role and that's why I've gone for it. Um, I've enjoyed my year, for well, about a year, five months on council so, so much. I think it's been so rewarding. I love getting to work with students, staff and the rest of council. And I just feel like I have so much more to offer and would love to continue that for the next academic year really. Okay, cool. So um, moving on to your manifesto, so basically what you said that um, you were going to introduce a peer assisted learning system, so how do you think you're going to achieve that? Where do you think? Yeah, so it's already quite successful in psychology and law and there's other universities, so York has quite a successful TAL system and Aberdeen, they introduced one from 2013. And so I was speaking to the lecturer that actually helped get it into psychology and it's something that it does, it took them years basically to actually get it up and running but I think looking at so many examples of good practice for it and trying to take those examples, put it in place here in Glasgow would definitely make it a viable option. I just think it's something then that can benefit all students across all subjects. It's not, it's not just something for group work mm -hmm. that everyone can meet together. It's like, because I know maths and stats have health sessions yeah. so it's like a different name for it but it's the same practice, just students helping students Okay. become better learners really. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, do, you, do you know how you'd get the students, how you would actually sort of implement those changes? Have you, do you have a plan for that? Or? I think it's something we'd probably bring to learning and uh, teaching committee and mm -hmm. I think there would be a lot of support probably coming from Leeds as well. They do seem to be quite involved with obviously learning enhancement so mm -hmm. that's something but I'd say nearly like in the same way the class reps are brought mm -hmm. about that you would tell it at lectures and then you get students come forward thinking that's something I would like to do, I think that could be good in practice, yep I'd be up for that and it's just sort of meeting together, yeah. getting a general idea of what students are bringing to them with maybe their mm -hmm. problems across the year. Okay, um, you mentioned, you just mentioned class reps, so we can just move on to that. You were also saying in your manifesto that you want to sort of reassess the role of the class rep, where do you yeah. think there is sort of room for improvement and how do you think you you'd actually improve their role or so reassess it? I think it's the same thing, I think it's coming from the very first moment a student comes to Glasgow, it's that lectures are probably selling the role of being a class rep, because I've never actually been one, I just went in a school rep, and that's the first time I've seen how, how much work they do, how hard the role actually is and it's so important to actually have representation from a class that will bring these problems to staff so yeah I think it's pr probably selling the role in the first place that students actually realise how important it is and how worthwhile it is for them mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Do you think then there's also sort of a problem in terms of that people don't really know what the SRC does, what the class reps do, the sort of ongoing problem of engagement and yeah. communication? Yeah, I think engagement with SRC class reps is a massive issue, so it's definitely something that needs to be worked on. Um, I think though, probably targeting class reps first would actually help with mm -hmm. the SRC engagement because you're getting it in, well in terms of sort of school reps anyway, that if you're getting people in meetings and their school rep is there and they're actually selling the role, it'll definitely help get the word out there what the SRC does and it's just more more visible really. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, then what you also said was that you wanted to actually get a feedback calendar out to mm -hmm. sort of in the course document in, uh, right from the start show when the um, assignment results are going to be out. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that uh, I think the previous um, vice president also said in her manifesto. What do you think um, were problems why that didn't work out and how do you think you can deal with that? Um, I think it's mainly holding staff accountable for it because it's not something that's actually hard to do. Mm -hmm. I would assume it's something that staff basically already have that they know what assessments are coming for them to be marking. So they know themselves that they have the three week deadline to actually get that feedback back so it's why can't that be made more public to students and then obviously students then can hold staff accountable mm -hmm. so I definitely think it's something that we're probably targeting more the heads of schools and be like 
this is something that is actually beneficial to your students or to your staff, like in within the time period. So it's yeah, basically explaining that it is something that is very worthwhile for both ends, for students and staff. So it's mm -hmm. just trying to explain that to them. Okay. And um, do you think, I mean, technically the publishing date, everybody can figure that out for themselves because they know the 15 day period. So do you think that's going to be effective in itself already? Or do you think there's still more to be done to kind of actually get the teachers to pass the feedback on, on time? Sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry. Um, basically, everybody kind of knows that it's a 15 day period yeah. until the feedback has to be given back. But that's not always the case. Do you think that sort of obviously publishing the date, the date is one thing, but do you think there could be more, there could be done more to kind of hold the staff accountable still? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, sort of again, like going back to class reps, that it's having the proper representation there. That it's not just going to be let go. That students themselves are talking and being like, "Why is it not back? This is a joke." It's actually bringing these to staff, and I also think that's another issue with communication that staff need to be saying back to students like maybe that I wasn't able to market within this time mm. um, properly explain because I don't think students would actually be about that bothered by it it's just the not knowing which is the mm. main issue with it I think okay so just again more communication between sort of yeah, staff yeah, and class reps students okay cool um then you were also talking about again coming to the issue of staff about the lecture recordings which is something that has been sort of asked for for years yeah. um you were saying that you want to have an opt-out policy so that everybody does lecture recordings if i understand you correctly unless they say they specifically don't want to yeah um can you sort of like explain that a bit further how you're wanting to achieve that right. so i think that's the main target of the lecture recording campaign and the SRC anyway is to get a uh, opt-out policy mm -hmm. so it's that Basically, if a lecturer doesn't want their lectures recorded, they have to specifically remove themselves from that and give a reason why. Um, I think that was the main issue I found for this year in psychology that it was, it's as a school anyway, it's quite good with lecture recording. So you have virtual third year, everything's recorded, but when you get to your fourth year, nothing, well, virtually nothing is recorded, and it's bringing up. We were told that it's an issue with the like specific staff; it's their choice. So I definitely think it's something that. If it is an opt-out policy, it's the same thing. You're getting the individual staff given their reasons as to why they don't want their lecture recorded, why they don't think it's a good idea. But the research is there. The, there is a lecturer in the psychology department at the minute. She's just published a paper on the benefits of lecture recording, and it looks at like the whole pedagogical research side to it, that has the benefits. So it doesn't impact uh, student attendance of lectures, but it's basically just making that clear to staff that it is not a big negative thing that they have to be afraid of, it's quite positive to properly enhance learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, that is also kind of linking in with what you were saying about technology enhanced learning mm -hmm. yeah. that you mentioned. How do you imagine that to be? Because I thought that was quite interesting, but I couldn't really imagine what your plans were for sort of combining computer and face-to-face -face teaching. Yeah, so I think it's like isn't a big emphasis on Moodle as a whole, but at the minute, I think the university has 27 um, postgrad courses taught online and the mass open online courses are through future learning. So like, it's already there and I think to be honest it's probably a big part of the future of higher education. So I think, yeah, to keep the university modern and especially with under the remit of education, it has to really push for that, that it is there, it's going to be the future. So specifically make a lot of resources available online to students that it is accessible. Um, but it's also yes, it's that idea of blended learning that it's taken, it's not just focused on, on online students, it's looking at ones in class, but how there is a balance of what you can do within the lecture theatre and as well when you're outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, cool. Is there sort of um, anything else that you would sort of like to address? For example, you're speaking of your online community that you want to enhance. Yeah. Is that something? I don't really think it's something. It is feasible. It does sound quite out there, but considering the success of the five student networks that have their more um, sort of welfare based, looking at um, student carers, student parents, those sorts of people, I think in that sort of sense, that taking that Facebook group network and applying that to 
online students and students that are not based here on campus in Glasgow is definitely something that will help build a community within the university. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you think sort of like that's the only way to better the community within the university? So for example, I don't know anyone from Dumfries or something. So yeah. do you think online is the best way to do that or the only way to do that or do you think there's anything oh, else? I do feel like it's the only way. Like, there are there, what, 600 students down in mm -hmm. Dumfries so I think because of the distance of the social media is a big big help to okay. try and break that distance but I'd say there definitely will be other options but that would be something to consider, definitely, mm -hmm. yeah.